And on the foreign scenes, U.S. President Donald Trump on Saturday slammed the mayors of Washington, D.C., Atlanta and Minneapolis over protests that ignited in cities across the United States over the police-involved death of George Floyd, an unarmed black man earlier in the week in Minneapolis. President Trump wrote on his Twitter page that the mayors were weak for allowing protests to get out of hand. As protesters refuse to back down and violent arrest continues on the streets, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz warned that he expects more arrests tonight. The governor said this in a televised conference. He said that the curfew gives government legal authority to make arrests of people out there and asked the public to help identify people inciting violence. Let be very clear. The situation in Minneapolis is no longer in any way about the murder of George Floyd. It is about attacking civil society, instilling fear, and disrupting our great cities. So as you saw this expand across the United States, and you start to see whether it be domestic terrorism, whether it be ideological extremist to fan the group, or whether it be international destabilization of, of how our country works, those elements are present in all of this. What you've seen in previous nights, I think, will be dwarfed by what they will do tonight. And if you are an innocent bystander going out there tonight, you will be swept up in this. What I would ask today is, if you know where these people are sleeping today, let us know and we will execute warrants. Let us know if there's someone that's there to do this. Start talking it back. If you know someone was down there protesting, help us. Help us. Call that in. Tell us who they were. They're not from Minneapolis, but they're staying down here. They're doing this. They're coming in. Some of this is going to be the tactics that we use. Um, these folks are very smart. If I tell exactly and he tells you, they will adjust and they will adapt. We changed in two nights. They changed with us. We are still in the middle of a pandemic and passed 1,000 deaths yesterday. We still have hospitals on the verge of being overrun with COVID-19. The folks that are gathering out there, and if you watch on Tuesday and Wednesday, Social distancing masks. The masks last night were worn to disguise. They were not worn to, to try and do anything. The masks worn by people there were to cause confusion and take advantage of this situation. Early yesterday, we began mobilizing additional soldiers. And we expect, to, and we expect by noon to have 2,500 soldiers and airmen mobilized and in support of the governor's executive order. But that's not enough. The governor just announced the full mobilization of the Minnesota National Guard for the first time since World War II. What does that mean? It means we're all in. As Governor Walls just laid out, we had a conversation with the Secretary of Defense and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and we are requesting national-level resources. The U.S. National Guard patrolled the streets of Minneapolis in the early hours of Saturday as local firefighters battled flames that engulfed a building on the intersection of E. Lake Street after hundreds of protesters defied an 8 p.m. curfew on Friday for a fourth night of protest over the police-involved death earlier this week of George Floyd. Authorities had hoped their officers' arrest would allay public anger and avert continued unrest, but some protesters clashed with riot police and others burned cars and looted stores. And joining us live from United States is Olu Osha, who is a lawyer in New York. Also joining us will be uh, from Lagos, Nigeria via Skype is Maka Anyangu, also a social commentator. Good evening, Maka. Good evening, Mr. Osha. Hello, good, good evening. evening. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Now, I'll begin with you, uh, Mr. Osha. Looking at, looking at the role of social media and the ensuing protests, help us understand how this works to produce what we are seeing in the media space now. Well, um, with regard to uh, social media, uh, the right of uh, Americans to protest is not new. It's actually something that's in... Uh, uh, it's it's in the American Constitution. It's the First Amendment. Their right to actually peaceably uh, protest and petition their government for grievances. Uh, however, you know, uh, today uh, with social media, uh, you find that the ability of people to protest 
uh, is almost instantaneous and it's ubiquitous, it's, it's everywhere. So we are seeing these protests that uh, seemingly erupted, uh, first of all, in Minneapolis for, following the uh, gruesome killing of uh, Mr. George Floyd uh, by, uh, uh, by, by cops on, uh, on Monday. Uh, we, we see that the protests are not localized, but they are actually everywhere now. There have been protests in Georgia. Uh, Georgia also called a state of emergency. There have been protests in Dallas. There have been protests in Washington, D.C. Uh, yesterday, I live in New York. Uh, there was a protest of about 3,000 people uh, around Brooklyn, and um, 200 arrests were made. So you can see that, uh, unlike uh, the way it happened about 55 years ago, uh, something similar happened uh, February the 18th, 1965, in Alabama, uh, after uh, a state trooper had actually uh, killed uh, a, a, an African American who was also a veteran. His name was uh, Jimmy Lee, uh, Jimmy Lee Jack Jackson, and he was uh, peaceably uh, participating in a march for voting rights. Of course, people in Alabama at that time had been disenfranchised, and uh, you know, after he was killed by a state trooper, um, we see that. A protest did occur. Um, uh, that was the Selma to Montgomery march. It, it, it did take place about it, but it took about three weeks, almost a month, to organize. And that was uh, between March. Uh, you know, it took 18 days. But later on in March, and uh, you know, the killing occurred February, sometime February 18. Uh, so you see that back then, before the era of era of social media and instant. Um, uh, ability to capture things on, on the phone and send it on the internet, uh, a camera, uh, a video recording that will actually uh, sensitize people to act immediately. Uh, we see that uh, the you know emotions were more localized and uh, log logistics planning it was more difficult than it is today. Uh, it's through uh, social media that we've been made aware of what's going on. Uh, you know the the the, the video the, the we saw live, the world has seen it, live murder of an unarmed black man uh, by, by cops. All right, and let me go to Maka course. now, who is still on the line with us. Uh, Maka, uh, you are in Nigeria, and you have seen how this, uh, the death of Floyd has resonated with almost everyone, you know, across the globe, and particularly even people in Nigeria, uh, you know, we're reacting to that death. Why did you think that that happened in that way, Maka? Um, well, as we know, this is not the first death of this type. Um, I think in the recent few, last few years, there's been a lot of gruesome killings caught on videos of African-Americans, unarmed African-Americans. Um, and I think the world is, is, I would just say the world is just tired. We're tired of seeing people of color being killed for no reason, especially by the people that are supposed to protect us. And I think why... Um, people in Nigeria can resonate it because unfortunately the same type of police brutality happens here as well. Um, and, and it's unfortunate that it, you know, with the social media era now, you can see these things um, happening and you can replay the video and the video circulates internationally. So it makes, it hits more to home than back then maybe the word circulated maybe through word of mouth or newspapers or whatnot. Um, but this, this incident is, is very similar to a lot of the other incidents um, that has happened. It, it's just unfortunate. Um, but I think that's what we need. We need people to speak up. We need voices. We need, especially those who are um, influencers or people of power to really speak up and voice what is wrong? What is wrong is wrong. It doesn't matter where it is. It doesn't matter who, what your, the color of your skin or your economical status. What's wrong is wrong. Um, police are supposed to be protecting us. And unfortunately, um, when you are of color, you are a target. You have a target on your back. Right. Let's go to Osha now. Um, we've seen that this protest has uh, escalated into uh, several days now. And now there's a curfew put in place, which protesters are even defying that law, making the governor of uh, the state to say, you know what, you people need to go home. And this is not a way to express your grievances. Do you think that statement is sensitive enough? And do you think that these protesters are trying, this is a way of sending 
a strong message to authorities and you know speak truth to power in the context of, of what has happened uh, in America this past uh, this uh, Monday. Well, um, in a way, uh, speaking truth to power, yes, uh, but let's consider you know uh, the 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 backdrop, the, the background in, within, in which this protest is uh, occurring. Um, we're in the midst of a pandemic and the, you know, it, it, it's a novel virus, the coronavirus. Uh, incidentally, African-Americans uh, who are also uh, the, uh, the victims in this regard, in this brutal killing uh, by, due to police uh, brutality, um, are also the most adversely impacted uh, from the coronavirus. Um, the, co the country was just starting to, uh, you know, to, to highlight the structural uh, inequities that's left African-Americans uh, and black and brown people the, uh, the worst disproportionately uh, impacted from the coronavirus that caused over 100,000 uh, lives in America. And so the, because we don't have a treatment, we don't have a vaccine, the way the government had Various, local, uh, uh, various governments had addressed it was to actually uh, have uh, imposed stay home orders, uh, curfews more, more or less, uh, for people to social distance and stay at home. Now, in the wake of this violent act, the brutal killing of uh, Mr. George Floyd, people now come out and they're protesting, making them at risk, right? So they're violating those orders. Um, uh, you, you know, we, as we said, you know, the, the coronavirus is actually an airborne disease. So there are many states, many localities, many uh, uh, counties that have, now have rules that people should wear masks. You see a lot of these uh, uh, protesters, they wear masks, true. But the thing is, um, it's also putting them in harm's way and it's going to be endangering other people. So that's the challenge that uh, the governor has. Uh, you can see when the governor first came out and reacted, he was very sensitized. By what had happened. Of course, this bothered any, anybody. You know, you watch a live killing, a live murder uh, by law enforcement. Um, it was unprovoked, it was unjustified. This is America, land of the free, and we have laws, we have rule of law. And so, um, of course, the uh, one of the culprits, uh, Derek Chauvin, he's been arrested. Uh, but again, that being said, Americans have a right to protest. It's their First Amendment right uh, to gather and protest. And um, this was something governors, you know, the governor himself, he had acknowledged that right. And, you know, you can go up. But the, but the thing is, the First Amendment says that, you know, uh, people have a right to protest peacefully. Uh, when you see the destruction of uh, property and things like that, you know, that's when it's, you don't want a, the, the society to fall into anarchy. And so that's where the National Guard is being called uh, to maintain order, law and order. All right. And as we said... Let, let's, so, Marka, take the last question in the interest of time. Sorry, I interject you there. Marka, lastly, uh, do you think that, you know, as a person of color, uh, if, you, I mean, you spent most of your life in America and you have folks there, do you still feel safe or do you think uh, black Americans uh, still feel safe with all that is happening? Um, black Americans can never feel safe. Whether you're, we can look at whether you're a woman, whether you're a man, Sandra Bland went through it as well, and there's a lot of other women that have went through it. Um, it's really unfortunate, but this racism has been in the culture and the system for many, many years. You have civil rights activists that have fought for freedom. You have people that have, you know, led slaves to freedom. You, you have Martin Luther King, Nate Turner, um, Harriet Tubman, and so many more who have fought for even just being able to in the same place as a white person or be in the, um, go to the same school. So there's a lot of things that had happened in history to free people of color from being different or being less than. But unfortunately, racism still is very present in the United States. And it's unfortunate that we have Donald Trump as a president who I believe really um, supports this racism and his comments. I think the other day, um, yesterday, if I'm not mistaken, he tweeted, um, if the looting starts, the shooting starts. So, I mean, if you have a president that, that has that point of view and is not really doing anything structural or meaningful to stop this racism, 
how do you expect um, African Americans or people of color to feel safe and not feel like a target? They, as soon as they walk outside their doors, they are open to anything and any type of racism. Someone can gun them down for no reason, as we've, we've just seen this over and over again. Mm-hmm. So unfortunately, I'm not, um, I'm not a supporter of violence. But if we see, as history has shown itself, the only way to free yourself from the oppressor has been either a revolution or a, a violence or uproar. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think seeing protests going on right now is, is standard. Um, I don't think there should be Mark, I'm sorry, burning of buildings. To, we have to wrap it there. Thank you so very okay, much no in the interest no of time. Thank you, Mark, and thank you, Mr. Osha, for your contributions on News on the Hour.